Let's take a look at the headlines making the papers around the world uh, this morning. Um, and uh, let's kick off with our um, uh, sister publication this day. Um, the main headline... Um the World Bank uh, uh, federal government states won't be able to pay salaries in 2022 if fuel subsidy is retained. Um, Finance ministers reveals plans to introduce transport grant for vulnerable Nigerians, a story that we were reporting earlier. Also another main story, the federal government rejects the Lagos hashtag NSARS panel's report over inconsistencies and innuendos, maintains a stance on Lekki incident, panel uh, concocted massacre in context according to Leh Mohammed. Uh, also, Amefali rules out further forbearance extension for intervention loans, says it's time to pay back the, uh, as the economy uh, recovers, urges customers to challenge discretionary bank charges, leaves NPR unchanged at 11.5%, and also MTN gets the sex approval for 575 million shares uh, offer for sale. Well, The Guardian is also carrying the federal government's response to the Lagos hashtag NSAS report, calling it recycled fake news tales by moonlight. But that's not the major headline for The Guardian. Doubts as federal government plans to reimburse poor Nigerians cancel fuel subsidy. Uh, some writers to that story this morning, petrol price to hover between 320 naira and 340 naira per litre. Erufai, uh, that's the governor of Kaduna State, says states will support total removal of fuel subsidy. The NNBC GMD, the group managing director, says subsidy will be removed early 2022. And expats, one petrol equalization may truncate deregulation policy. Cash payment induces corruption. And a quick look at the Punch newspaper. Uh, hashtag NSARS uh, amnesty. Others knock federal government as uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, rubbishes Lekki Massacre report. Uh, there's more right above the nameplate. Uh, Nigerians in diaspora spent $2.94 billion to remit $34.8 billion. And that's according to a report on page 28. Governors say subsidy will hamper salaries in 2022. They're supporting the 5,000 Naira grant. And the EFCC picks up Fani Kayode for alleged forgery and document manipulation. Uh, the Nation this morning had the main headline petrol to sell for 340 naira per litre. Next year, says Chiari, uh, Labour cautions government against unilateral action. 5,000 naira monthly uh, stipend for uh, 40 million Nigerians. Also on the front cover, um, again, the federal government rejects Lagos NSARS panel report, says it's fake news and waste of taxpayers' money. Um, also, 2.3 trillion spent to cushion COVID-19 effects. APC reconciliation panel gets 35 uh, petitions. And also, how to revamp the economy by the World Bank. That's the nation this morning. Let's see what's making the headlines on the front pages of international papers. The I says number 10 has defended Prime Minister Johnson, insisting he is not unwell after his unusual speech to business leaders on Monday. And uh, moving on now to the Times, uh, patients to travel for treatment. Uh, this one, a radical proposal to cut uh, NHS waiting lists. And there's more right at the top, but killers of emergency workers will be giving live sentences. That's from the Times. Uh, the Independent this morning um, called for Johnson to act on high COVID cases. Apparently, ministers in England have lost the message over COVID-19. That's according to scientific advisers. Uh, also, the front page, um, Pope pays tribute to murdered MP. Uh, there's a message from the pontiff was read out during a service for Sir David Amos in Westminster Cathedral. Uh, that's the Independent this morning. On the front page of The Guardian UK, the Treasury is set to be frustrated by the way major political decisions are being made and is called now for a shake-up in Downing Street. And finally from Daily, the Daily Express, uh, police killers to be jailed for life. And finally the Daily Mail this morning, um, Harper's Law triumph for campaigning widow who watched killers of PC husbands smirking in dock, life for killing police and nurses um, and also why did BBC give airtime to Meghan instead of the Royals so that is the uh, front pages of the newspapers this morning well, so 
Okay, before we bring in uh, Emmanuel Bella for the press preview, let's return back to the live we're monitoring at this time and NASA uh, launch uh, to crash an asteroid. Uh, do we have feet from there? Okay, at this time, we'll wait till we get the latest from NASA. Let's bring in Emmanuel Bello for the press preview this morning. And we'll begin with uh, this day. Great to see you as always, Emmanuel. Very quickly, uh, the World Bank telling the Nigerian government that states won't be able to pay salaries in 2022 if few subsidies retained. We've been on this for a long time, Emmanuel. Uh, tough times, they say, I mean, require tough measures, but... Does the Nigerian government have the political will and what it takes to take that tough measure at this tough time? Well, good morning. And, uh, we're back to reality from all that whole NASA thing. We're back to Earth and back to Nigeria and back to <laughs> some of this story. This morning, you look at the papers, it's actually a case of pick the kind of bad news you want to, uh, you want to look at. And, and this is one strong one that Nigerians will be really looking at. I think there's... I think there's a, uh, some political will now on the part of government to remove those subsidies. In fact, uh, the officials are very clear about it that by next year, uh, they will take out those subsidies. What that means is that uh, fuel is going to sell uh, at a higher price. The prices are there. It's going to hover between uh, 320 naira to 340. Um, there will be all sorts of uh, uh, effects of, of that. And uh, government seems to be prepared. Uh, for instance, it's saying that it's going to be paying Nigerians 5,000 uh, monthly. And that's to, you know, to ease the crisis of transportation because uh, a lot of people will now fall back to public transportation uh, to get to where they are going. Uh, with the incre increase in, in fuel prices, of course, all sorts of things will also go up. Uh, it looks like a doomsday scenario and the World Bank is already offering statistics to suggest that uh, there will be crisis next year. And World Bank is suggesting that, yes, take out the subsidy. Um, that's the only way you'll be able to meet these this overheads of both the federal government and, uh, and the state government. So, yeah, on one hand, it looks like a very, very gloomy picture, but on the other hand, if you think of what those subsidies money can do for infrastructure, for, you know, development and for, you know, cushioning the effects of those uh, uh, increase in, in, in fuel prices, uh, the experts will be telling you that it's a good decision and already the governors are backing that. Uh, some people, some experts also backing that. But I'm sure uh, labor unions and the rest uh, will begin to talk about protecting the citizens against uh, the higher gains of removal of subsidy. So, yes. It seems as if uh, we are entering the new year, um, uh, entering it with this reality of uh, increase in, in fuel and then, of course, the removal of subsidy, but again, with the corresponding development on, and touching the lives of people with those same monies uh, that will be saved, a lot of money saved from um, the removal of subsidies. So, uh, depending on how you're looking at it, whether the cup is half full or the cup is half empty, but looks like if it's going to be a challenging and interesting year. And don't forget that the elections are up ahead uh, in 2022. Well, Emmanuel, uh, it's, it's an interesting time we're in. Uh, last week I was asking about Christmas being in danger. Now it's, it's, the question is, is going to be, is school fees in danger? But uh, still on this issue of taking out subsidies, the Minister of Finance is saying that they're going to pay 5,000 naira to 30 to 40 million Nigerians to cushion the effects of this removal. Now, a quick calculation. The, the, uh, the, the details are saying that they're trying to save about 3.2 trillion naira. If we're going to pay 5,000 naira to 40 million Nigerians each year, it will cost about 2.4 trillion naira leaving just about 800 billion naira in savings. What are we doing? Is this the way to go? One take away one subsidy, pay back another. Well, that's, that's the kind of crisis that, uh, you know, I mean, the arguments around the issue of removal of subsidy have actually, you know, thrown up all the time. These arguments are there, or that it's a case of, you know, winning on one side and then losing on the other side. Uh, the Balancing Act is what the federal government is going to have to grapple with as we enter, as we get into next year. On one hand, you are taking away such a very important cushion of the people, uh, especially in, uh, in the issue of uh, how much they pay uh, to get food. And now you're going to take it out and then give them 5,000 Naira uh, each. Some people will even ask you, what's 40 million Nigeria, what will 5,000 Naira uh, do to them? Well, it's an experiment that uh, we're all going to be the guinea pigs in this, in this lab. <laughs> We are all going to experience whatever it's going to, uh, that is going to do to Nigerians. But um, there are people who will tell you that, well, that is the only way to go. 
uh, if you're ever going to fund those things that the World Bank is talking about, uh, issues of salary, for instance, uh, state government won't be able to do a lot. And right now, already, as governors salivated, expecting those removals and the monies that is going to be agreeable to the states and what they will do with the money. I think at the end of the day, it's about prudence and proper planning and a good spending plan on how to get, about, get around some of these issues. I think, uh, Emmanuel, it's, a, it's an issue that um, uh, some, uh, many countries are also facing around the world. I think we, we spoke on Monday that uh, how do we fix the economy? And I said it would take a, a, at least a week to answer the question. And we're still an answering the question, so to speak. But let's move on to the, the other big news on, on a lot of the newspapers this morning. And that's the federal government's stance with regards to the Lagos and SARS rep uh, report, calling it fake news, waste of taxpayers' money. I suppose what the question is, what is the point in, in spending money on these reports if the government won't accept them? That's an interesting question, and, uh, and I think that's the, that's the major question here, because we are not talking about a, res a report coming from outside the government. We are talking about a report that was actually funded by taxpayer money for a whole year. The Lagos State Government, you know, uh, was, was they raised that panel. And now, the same government, and it's interesting to know that uh, the, the Lag Lagos State is APC, the federal government is APC. The same government saying that, well, we don't believe in these reports, it is fake news, and um, um, it's a collection of uh, uh, lies. Uh, and though, if you look at what uh, the federal government is saying, they are actually picking holes uh, with the reports. Uh, some other people, even outside government, pick setting holes with uh, uh, the report generally, looking at some of the discrepancies uh, we've reported on some of those things in, in, in the past. Uh, but yes, people are, are bound to ask the kind of question, Dan, you just ask that, ah, why is the government, uh, you know, same, why is the government seemingly uh, disagreeing with its own findings? And, you know, uh, the Lai Mohamed, the Minister of Information, said some real hard-hitting things yesterday and uh, taking even, uh, you know, uh, CNN network uh, to the cleaners and saying that CNN is relying on fake reports. Well, Emmanuel, thank you so much for joining us on the press briefing.